My name is James Kavanagh, and usually found on Snapchat, but today I'm being filmed on a real camera. Um, I do sex education lessons on my Snapchat every Tuesday. Um, I get questions in from young people all over Ireland about sex things um, and usually I'm okay with answering most of the questions but some of them I'm a bit out of my depth and um, so I've partnered up with letsgetchecked.com which are these gorgeous little kits you can get sent and do self checks at home um, and I'm going to talk to their Dr. Dom um, about some of the questions I got sent in to hopefully clear some stuff up uh, so stay tuned. So Dom welcome to the Let's Get Check Couch. Thank you very much Joe. Tell me a bit about you and what you do. So I am a genital urinary medicine physician, which is a real mouthful, but that's basically sexual health and HIV. Okay. And I work in James's, which is the biggest sexual health clinic in the, in the or center in, in the country. And I'm also medical director for this company, Let's Get Checked. Okay, amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here because I've been asked loads of questions um, on my Snapchat from loads of curious okay. teenagers and stuff because I get the vibe that uh, sex education and skills these days is really like, you know, it, it's not being taught properly at all. So a lot of kids and stuff are coming to me and I'm like oh I'm not totally qualified so I have a list of questions and stuff Brilliant. that I, I've, okay. been, I've been sent in okay. can we talk through them yeah so well, first of all what's the difference between STDs and STIs why are those two words turn around okay so it's really great question and it's just put it to bed for once so they're the exact same thing so the reason they changed we scientists really doctors changed it from D which stands for disease to I which stands for infection just to make it less stigmatizing, really. Okay. Because a disease has a more of a negative connotation to it. Yeah. You know, so, uh, and diseases are often things that happen to older people as well. So it, it's literally the exact same thing. It just changed it over the last couple of years. So it's STDs are STIs, same thing. Okay, so if we were to pick one, what would we say? STD? STIs. STI. Yeah, so D is gone. Okay, yeah, and okay. I. Um, and then I have been reading a couple of articles about STIs in Ireland and it seems like they're, they're on the rise yeah. um, and I think maybe it's because people are ashamed of talking about going to get checked. There's this stigma around sex I think in Ireland. Are you seeing a spike in, in, in certain STIs? Are, is there, are they on the rise? And why do you think that? Yeah, so every STI is on the rise, everything. So the moment we have an epidemic or an outbreak, um, so we have even above the normal rises of everything, so warts, herpes, everything's on the rise. Okay. But we have even bigger spikes in gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV is a 50% rise okay. compared to last year, which is unheard of. Yeah. You know? um, but gonorrhea amongst young straight um, guys and girls, there's an epidemic, okay. syphilis amongst young men of sex and men, and then HIV again amongst young men of sex and men. So, you know, I think the reasons are like there's loads of factors. You know, yeah. I think um, there hasn't been a really good public health campaign for safe sex mm. in, in ages. You yeah. Know? Um, the other thing is social media. Uh, like it's so much easier to hook up and have random one nighters yeah. than it used to be. Like in, in, in my day, I'm, I'm so old, but uh, yeah. you, just, you know, you went home from the club and your night was over. Yeah. But now you go home from your club and you might be high, you might be you might be drunk, and you You're can you can ride. and you can hook up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So social media has made it really really easy. Okay. Um, and then I think there's a lack of fear as well. People don't understand that some of the some of the STIs are really unpleasant you know mm. you really don't want to get them yeah and um, some of them are getting resistant to antibiotics so they're not as easy to treat as they used to be either yeah you know? yeah, yeah so there's a, there's just there's a lack of a lack of understanding mm. you know and I like I'm of the belief that and it sounds like a lot of effort but if you're with someone mm. after you're with them you kind of need to get checked before you get to the next person big time a lot of yeah. people think you know you can get with six people over the course of a couple of months and then get your check but yeah. it, you kind of I feel need to get checked between every single person absolutely categorically that that's one of the times we always suggest to people is at the beginning of a new relationship. Yes, even if it's a small yeah. relationship, even if it's just a fuck buddy. Yeah, fine. or one just, night just check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, into some of the questions. Yeah, great. Um, so how easy it is? How easy is it to contract STIs? And you might explain that in like you know ones you can get from kissing, sure. some you can get from penetrative sex, sure, and sure. then ones you can get from like oral sex. Okay, okay. Yeah, patients always ask me, you know, can you get anything safe? For example, okay, so oral sex, you can get chlamydia gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes. Okay. No problem at all. That's easy to get. And you can't get those ones from kissing? You can get a cold, no, no. So we just say no for all. You can get, you, if you have a cold sore, you can pass a cold sore on, as okay. we know. But that can happen in a non-sexual way. Yeah. You can get a cold sore from your, your, your mom kissing you or something. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So we just say no STIs from, from, oral, from kissing. It's just okay. easier that way, just to say none. But oral sex, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes. Okay. No problem at all. And then penetrative? Penetrative sex, everything. Okay. You know, HIV, no hepatitis, barred. syphilis, no yeah. hose barred at all. And then skin to skin, you can get a couple of things. So you can get 
obviously yes, scabies skin to skin mm -hmm. you can get pubic crabs skin to skin and you can get warts you can get the hpv virus lives um it just believe in the epidermis of your skin so you can actually if you had a wart on your groin area and you were lying on top of somebody you could pass it on okay so unfortunately skin to skin you can also get something now <laughs> sounds very unfair I've, I've been asked this so many times and it sounds like an urban myth but toilet seat to skin can no, you get crabs worry, I get from toilet seats? all the time and no, they live for a couple of minutes, a crab, um, but no, no, just say no. Okay. Definitely no. Bed sheets? Uh, bed sheets, yeah. Bed sheets, crabs, scabies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can, unfortunately, yeah, if you're unlucky, you know, and that's why often in, you know, gay sex on premises venues like the boiler house or any, any gay sex on premises venue, mm. you know, if there's shared tiles or something, you yeah. could get crabs, you know, okay. so it can happen, yeah. But yeah. we're fine for toilet seats. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. Put, put, put that one to bed, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> now, another question I get is, um, where do STIs come from? And is it possible for two virgins to contract an STI during their first time? No. Okay. No, you have to be, you have to get it. Somebody has to get it first so of all. You can't generate an STI? No, no, okay. no, no, so two virgins couldn't. Okay, cool. No. Uh, another question, I've had unprotected, unprotected sex over a year ago and never since. No symptoms okay. or discomfort ever. Should I still get checked even though it's been so long? Uh, absolutely, this is the problem because 80% um, of women have no symptoms of chlamydia and then you know, it leads to infertility, pelvic inflammatory disease. Um, syphilis once you have the initial initial ulcer um it disappears after two weeks because it's painless the ulcer yeah. so if you get the ulcer inside your mouth you're never going to know it's there or inside your vagina or inside your rectum you don't know it's there then it disappears and then you get it going to secondary syphilis and third third stage syphilis so ah oh, definitely there's i mean no matter no how long just get Big it checked. Yeah, yeah yeah absolutely i'd agree uh, and then do you have to be i guess this is uh, relate uh, relative to clinics and stuff do you have to be 18 and over to get tested or can you go into a clinic and be younger no so you can be younger so say for example in james is they have a young person's clinic the ypc that's on a thursday i might have changed it tuesday but it's on the website but yeah no that's for anybody under the age of, under the age of 18. and do you have to bring a parent in or can you go alone so it's a bit of a gray area about you so for example you can go in on your own but if there's any question for example that they mightn't have the maturity to be seen or to answer the right questions or to basically provide consent yeah then they did they probably talk to the social worker and the social worker might say look i i don't think i think you're going to need to bring in somebody older with you yeah, yeah. but they can to your listeners or your followers you can say look they can come on their own yeah but you know if if they were confused or muddled about it. They can it. ring ahead though, I'm sure. And yeah, they can, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, there, is cool. a young person, there is a young person's clinic. Yeah, yeah. okay, amazing. Um, does the guy have to, well, I guess this has been cleared up, but does the guy have to ejaculate inside you to get an STI? No, so you can have like infections in pre-cum, mm. first of all, so he doesn't have to ejaculate. And then there's obviously infections in vaginal secretions, so, and in rectal secretions. So no, he doesn't have to ejaculate, definitely not. Okay. Uh, what's the situation with giving blood, so people donating blood, if you've had an STI but it's now gone, can you still give blood if you got gonorrhea yeah, time ago? Yeah, so no problem with the bacterial ones, so chlamydia and gonorrhea, no problem. The only ones they check you for, the blood bank ch check you anyway, so there's no, there's no need to worry. The blood bank check you for hepatitis A, B and C, yeah. syphilis and HIV, so this, okay. they're checking your blood. So no, don't worry, no old infections, that, like chlamydia and gonorrhea, no hassle, because once you treated them, they're, they're gone, you know, yeah. there's nothing there. Yeah. And yeah. um, if you're having sex with people but always use condoms, should you get checked still? So again, if you're having sex with people... And you're using condoms the whole time, should you get checked? Well, I guess that well, means if you're having oral sex without the condom. See, well, I've never met anybody who's having oral sex with condoms. So, yeah. So if you're having oral sex with condoms, then they need to be checked. But also, how certain can you be in all your nights out on the tear and that, you know, the condom never split, it never fell off? Yeah. Very few, very few of us could say with absolute certainty it was always protected. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's and, not real life. And what's your thoughts on um, like dental dams for, for lesbians? Because that's a question that comes up a lot, but like where do you even get a dental dam? You can get them in pharmacies. You can get them in, like, you can get them in boots. Okay. Um, you can get them. Um, but I always advise uh, to go to like, you know, certain sex shops in town are really good. And mm. um, that's where I would send a lot of patients to get good lube, for example. Yeah. But dental dams are like, we give them out in, the, in our clinic, in the guide clinic. Yeah. And we have them there. Um, and we also have femidoms is the other thing, you know, for, okay. yeah, but they're not that common, you know, they aren't that common, but I suppose 
online it's probably the easiest ultimately to buy it okay. for gay girls you know if they wanted yeah. to get them is that okay. a question you, you've been asked before a yeah. few times yeah because okay. you know th with, with a penis you know if you want to be super prote pr uh, protecting yourself with oral sex you can put it that yeah. on but people are unsure of what to do with two women like yeah. giving each other heads yeah well the big thing I'm to say to your to gay girl followers of yours I suppose is about sharing of sex toys mm. that's the biggie you know that, oh is it yeah well that's the biggie that I would find that, I mean there's been studies that have shown that like the wart virus the HPV that causes genital warts and cervical cancer that lives on sex toys it can live on sex toys for 24 hours oh really yeah so it's okay. really important to clean sex toys between use um, and so that's, how like hot water or yeah whatever. hot water or just water, soap is fine or else one of those alcohol gels you know yeah um, but that's really important that's what I would say to you to the, the, your gay girl followers you know um, mm. but dental dams yeah we do have them in the guy clinic they're and they are available in pharmacies. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, my boyfriend of two years just got checked and came back all clear. He got checked thanks to you. See, uh, thanks to me. <laughs> uh, should I get checked or does this confirm that I'm also in the clear? As I'm the girl, maybe there is something that I only have. Are STIs specific <laughs> to gender? No, but it, it is interesting because I often would have what we call a discordant couple. So where one has an infection, one doesn't have it. Mm. And it causes a huge amount of uh, you know strife and upset because one person assumes the other person has done the dirt or whatever. Yeah. But like our own immune system will clear a certain amount of bugs itself. So for example, if we were going out with each other and you have chlamydia, I might necessarily, have, I definitely would have had it, but my body might have cleared it itself. Okay. So he could have cleared it or he'd be negative, but she could be harboring it still. Okay. Because everybody's so immune system fights differently, you know? Because first, HPV, for example, the wart virus, we all get it by the time we're sexually active. Like 99% of us have had it, but we don't all have warts. Mm. So we get it and we, we clear it. So she, she might have something, and even though he's negative, yeah. So it's it's so it's not enough for one person in no, the relationship no. to go and get checked and be definitely. like, okay, we're both clear then. No, exactly. That's the big problem. No, definitely not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wasn't a long term relationship, and I was told I have herpes, but I knew that I neither, but I knew that neither of us had been with anyone else or had a cold sore. What tests can I take to check if I still have it? Um, yeah, it's herpes is a difficult one because again, it's in you forever. Isn't yeah. It? Well, it's in you forever, but also this two types, type one and type two. Yeah. And type one, like 90% of us in Ireland have type one, because we get it from our mum and dads and our aunts and uncles giving us a kiss. So yeah. that, that was the classic, one was on the lips and two was on the genitals. That's what they, they used to think. Okay. But now with oral sex, it all kind of started around the time sex in the city got huge. And oral sex became really, really popular. Really? Yeah, there was a huge so spike. Of, Samantha yeah, Jones, yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> okay. So I suppose what she can do is she can have a blood test called a herpes specific blood mm. test where she can see has she ever been exposed to type 1 or type 2 before but if it says type 1 it's not very helpful because 90 percent of us have type 1 in our okay. blood but if it's type 2 so basically if she gets an outbreak if she gets a blister or has an outbreak on the genital area the most definitive way of getting tested is get to a doctor that day or the next day and get a swab of the blister taken that's the best test. Okay. A swab when so she a swab. has a, when she has an outbreak. Okay. There's nothing to swab once you don't have an outbreak. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Cool. Mm. Um, symptoms. Mm. Do all of them display symptoms, or some of them, or what's the story there? Yeah. No. Not a, no. A lot of them don't display any symptoms. Remember, we were saying about chlamydia and gonorrhea, chlamydia and syphilis. No, often very very silent. Yeah. And uh, gonorrhea is particularly aggressive. It's normally a green yellow discharge and you know the, the pissing razor blades would be the classic kind of terminology. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's awful. awful. It's awful. Yeah. Really sore or big swollen testicle. You'll know about it if you've got gonorrhea. Sa saying that I actually got it twice. One, someone cheated on me in a relationship and the other time I was just single. Uh, once it showed symptoms and then the second time it didn't. It only showed up when I got tested. And that's the big problem with the new outbreak. It's, it's slightly different. It's not a different strain. It's still the same bug, but it's not behaving in exactly the way it used to. They sound kind of like Pokemon. They're yeah. evolving. <laughs> I know this, yeah. yeah. And they're getting resistant as well. Oh my God. No, yeah. you know, it's the new escaped twice. So these are the Pokeballs, really. <laughs> <laughs> they are the Pokeballs, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Oral sex is some so questions did we answer, here that we've... Did we answer that question or did about we just symptoms. start laughing? Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> well, kind yeah. of, it, okay, some, so of them sh some of them... But even like HIV, chosen, which doesn't. is really important to say, like HIV, you know, is very commonly, you get this illness at the beginning called a seroconversion when, mm. when the virus is attacking you and it's like a really bad flu, but it's like the worst flu you've ever had in your life. But it's often commonly mistaken as the flu. Yeah. And the year of the swine flu, loads of people loads of their GPs said you have the swine flu but it was actually HIV seroconversion okay. and once you're through the acute flu that only lasts about a week then it goes completely silent for three to five years until you're incredibly ill okay. so that's another really important one to remember that's silent yeah, you know, yeah. if, you've, if you've ignored that flu it goes silent yeah, you know, so, so does syphilis so checked. does chlamydia so, so get checked I think people sometimes ask that because they don't 
half of them want to be checked and half of them don't want to be checked. That's why we may ask those questions, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, on to oral sex. Mm. Um, we've kind of covered a lot here, but uh, if you can just name the ones you get, for STIs you can get from oral yeah, sex again. Yeah, so chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes. Is that all of the ones you can get? Um, HIV, no. Yeah. He- hepatitis B, sorry. Hepatitis B as well, you can get from oral sex. Okay. So hepatitis B and A is in your sli- it can be in your saliva and your, and, your, uh, and your blood as well. But you can get B from sharing toothbrushes. You can get B from kissing. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Actually, so if you're at an after party, life. don't share yeah. toothbrushes. I suppose it's not, that, it's not that common in Ireland. That's why I wasn't including earlier, earlier on. But mm. no, an after party, I wouldn't share toothbrushes. No. <laughs> I've done that before. Okay, uh, <laughs> can you get an STI from being fingered? Uh, it causes a lot of anxiety, you know. A patient's going to do all the time with it. In, in theory, if you had chlamydia or gonorrhea on... So, say, for example, if you touched your penis or touched your boyfriend's penis or your girlfriend's vagina and they had chlamydia there and you transferred it straight into their bum, yes, you could. Okay. But it would have to go straight from organ straight into your bum. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it would have to yeah, be yeah. pretty quick. Yeah. But yes, you could in theory, theoretically. In theory, okay. But there has to be bacteria on the finger, do you know what I mean? First, yeah, First of yeah. all, or else, so, so, so fingering is completely harmless. Yeah. Unless there's something on your finger. Okay, cool. Um, I'll, I'll double this one up because it's been in two questions. Can you get pregnant from just oral sex and also can you get pregnant from anal sex? No and no. No and no. No, no. Flat? Flat, no. Yeah, okay. Flat, no. Uh, should you use a condom during oral sex? Yeah, I mean, sure, but it probably just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, you know, it doesn't happen. I mean, you'd love to see it as a sexual doctor in theory. You'd love to see it, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be. I mean, not, you know, you, you should. <laughs> <laughs> you can just keep saying you should. <laughs> yeah, contraception. Um, do condoms work 100 percent of the time? They're really successful, but I always say, you know, it's it, condoms in Ireland it, it drive me kind of crazy because they're quite expensive. You, you know, in the gay scene, you. There's quite a lot of condoms around. They're, they're more freely available than they are in the straight scene. They're, they're never around in the straight SUs scene. SUs in colleges usually have they those. They do, in fairness. Too. They do. SUs do have them. But the big thing with condoms, I'm always saying to my uh, lads the, the, who come and see me, is like, they always say to me, oh, I hate condoms. They don't, they don't fit. They always split. They always fall off. But like, there's four different sizes of condoms. And you wouldn't wear your mate's shoes out for the night and expect to be comfortable. You yeah. know? But literally, lads expect every condom size to fit every penis. But there's actually four different sizes you can get, you know, small, medium, large, extra large. And then there's different thicknesses. Like for anal sex, you're supposed to use a thicker condom. Oh, for, right, okay. So it's not one fits no, all. No, not at all. Okay. And, so, and if guys go off, there's a great website, which I don't know if we're allowed to name websites, are we? In your, are we allowed? It's a company. It's very good. Yeah. Anyway, it's an educational, so it's, it's oh, fine. Yeah, yeah. It's Passant. They're, they make condoms. And they send you out a penis sizer. It's, oh. a, it's a cardboard oh. penis sizer, and you stick your penis through it. Okay. And then they recommend what size you get. And then you can bulk buy. Okay, yeah. And then you find your so condom. So thousands for the yeah, year. That's your Louis Vuitton for the year. That you always find them. <laughs> that's, that's it. Like you find them forever. The condom once and for all, and that's okay, it done. Okay, amazing. Passante is good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, oh yeah. If you wear, should you wear two condoms if you want to be extra careful? Or so studies have no. It's it's a reasonable question, and I remember I, I remember thinking that when I was younger and I was becoming sexually active, thinking that yeah, I'll do doubly, that. Protective. doubly protective. Yeah. it kind of intuitively makes sense. Yeah, they've, they've actually done studies to show that double double uh, wrapping is actually more dangerous. You're far more likely to split with double wrapping. Okay, because there's so much friction. Yeah, they'll both they'll both pop. Okay, because in theory you'd need lube over one condom and then another condom on, but then they, the top one would slip off. Yeah, I feel like you'd lose it in the person. Free, and you'd lose it all the time. Like I would, we would have female patients in like at least every, every day with retained condoms. No way. Out. Yeah, 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 every day. Yeah, yeah. And, and guys as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Little little pliers and get them out of the torch. Okay. Yeah. So let's just say one condom. One condom. A good. A good sized condom yeah. with enough lube. That's, okay. that's what they should, people should be investing in. And is is there a difference between condoms you'd buy in like kind of a, a cheaper, uh, non-branded shop or should you go for the, the branded you, condoms? You don't have to go for the mega expensive one, but they need a kite mark on the back and they need the CE stamp. Okay. And the big thing is, um, and they're all, that's on the back of every condom, and every condom has an expiry date. And it's so important, okay. like within even a month, because you know, I'm sure you're the same as me. If you read the back from expired data, say tablets, you still take them. Yeah. You'd say, ah, oh, I'm sure they're going to work, you know. Yeah. But condoms do actually split because the latex is so thin. Yeah. If they're a couple of months over, they will split. I had a know. guy in school who had his lucky condom in his wallet, yeah. and I think he had it for about four years. <laughs> wasn't like, that, wasn't that lucky, was it? <laughs> no, nothing in the wrapper afterwards. 
So is there is uh, there actually a thing where you shouldn't keep a condom in a wallet for so long? Yeah, 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 definitely. Well, well, just I mean that's why the expiry date is on each individual one, you know. Yeah, okay. So he never got lucky. And, no, he never uh, got even lucky. Even if he used it, even if he used it, he wasn't going to be lucky either. Yeah. He's going to get gonorrhea straight away. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Um, if uh, this may seem a bit mad, but it, it was asked a couple of times, can you reuse a condom? No, it's really interesting. <laughs> so I had that question as well. You, um, you could if you could get it back on. Yeah. But I have absolutely no idea how you get it back on. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, That's that expensive. No. <laughs> I mean, if you're, de- if you're desperate, I'd use yeah. it again. But I've had people like who'd use wrapping paper and cling film, cling film all the time. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 And you've got to hand it to them because they're in the moment, the heat, I guess, heat yeah. of the passion. And, and they've gone to make an effort. So I think yeah. it's admirable. Yeah. No one else ever bothers. Keep doing it. You know, yeah. keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, keep doing it. <laughs> Tin foil. <laughs> um, what, how likely is it to get pregnant if you have the Implanon bar? I've heard stories of so many people becoming pregnant when they had the bar and I'm, ju- and I'm just concerned as I already have a child. All oh, right. No, I mean, I've never, I've never come across it. Okay. I have tons of, tons of patients with implant on in. I've never heard of it. Um, it was possibly those people who got pregnant. It might have been, uh, you know, when you get any contraception put in, like the, the implant or the patch on your arm, you always have to use double up with condoms. You, not, not double condoms, but yeah. use condoms as well for the first three weeks okay. of the bar going in. So some people get caught out at the beginning mm. or when the bar is coming to the end of its life, they get caught out. But when it's in, it's it's you know, it's Same. absolutely success- okay. brilliantly uh, successful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, UTI. So, what's the difference between a UTI and an STI? Okay. So we all have your UTI is a urinary tract infection, obviously, and an STI is a sexually transmitted infection. So, by the very nature, STI is the word transmitted in it. Mm. And urinary tract doesn't have the word transmitted. So, urinary tract is when you all the bacteria, like we we have loads of normal bacteria that live in the in our urethra, which is the urinary tract tube. You know, the tube that you yes. pee out of. Yeah. So we have loads of bacteria that live there. If you get an overgrowth of bacteria, so some of this very common bacteria called E. coli, mm. and it, there's loads of E. coli in your bladder and in your urinary tract. Sometimes um, we get an overgrowth of it, and then you get a urinary tract infection. Yeah. So it's kind of normal bacteria that lives around the area. Just too much. Whereas of it. sexually transmitted infections is an infection you got from somebody else. Do you know what I mean? So UTI you can get and generate it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a good way of. Differentiating. Any tips on how to lessen the chance of a UTI, like cranberry juice or something like that? Yeah, look, cranberry juice is a bit of an urban cranberry juice is a bit of an urban myth because, like, um, but there are cranberry concentrate tablets, um, mm. so the basically super concentrated version of the juice yeah. that you can take that some women find successful. The biggest thing you can do um, to stop you getting UTIs is make sure you empty your bladder before sex and you empty your bladder after sex. Because okay. if most people, you know, realistically, most people have sex at night. They'll often have sex after a few drinks, mm. so they'll pass out straight after sex because obviously ejaculating and yeah. orgasming makes you tired. And then what happens is you've all this, the penis has pushed bacteria up the, uh, the woman's urethra, up yeah. towards her bladder. Okay. So bacteria that might have been around the outside of her vagina, the penis has pushed it up there. Okay. And then the bladder is full of nice warm urine all night. Yeah. So that's like a little incubator for the bladder. Okay. So if, if there's if your bladder is full, cook it. yeah, they literally <laughs> cook it. So oh my I, God. that's where that's where the t- um, term honeymoon cystitis comes from. Because in the old days when people didn't con- have sex before they got married, yeah. the first night they would consummate the marriage, often the women would get cystitis or urinary tract infection the next day. Okay. So it's called honeymoon cystitis. Okay. So that's what a lot of our patients come in saying, I've got honeymoon cystitis. But basically, pee, empty your bladder before sex and empty it after sex if you can. Okay. Uh, this is just a question that occurred to me, but um, you know, should you get, after you have sex and maybe you weren't using condoms, should you get rid of the juices inside you no. for men and women? No, so or? no, douching's a disaster. So studies have shown for gay men or men with sex and men, if you douche after anal sex, you have like, I can't remember the exact percentage, but a hugely increased odds ratio of developing an STI. Oh really? Because you're breaking down the, you're breaking down the fine mucosa, the lining of the rectum, mm. you're gonna cause microscopic bleeds. So any, any, of the, any of the bugs that are there in the sperm or in the pre-cum are gonna, are gonna go in there. Okay. So douching is really, douching is increasing your odds okay. after sex. And the same goes for females because- So the, just keep it in. The vagina is supposed to be acidic. It's, it's designed to be acidic and it's better to be it's acidic. That protects the girls from loads of other infections. Mm. So if, you're, if you douche, if you stick the shower head inside, you wash out all the good bacteria and that leads you, leads you open to things like bacterial vaginosis and thrush. So no, douching is a no-no. Okay. Uh, now a bit about let's get checked. Yeah. So uh, what's your opinions on the kits and um, I guess what do the different kits cover? Yeah, so we have, so we have these are the three here. So we have the simple two, 
Yeah. Which is chlamydia and gonorrhea. They're the most common ones, I guess. Yeah, the most common ones. And also, you know, this is straightforward. This is pee in a pot and okay. send it in. You know, it couldn't be more, e- it couldn't be easier. Have you, you, have you showed your followers them before, haven't yes, you? Yes, I so have, they, they're, yeah. they're familiar. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, is the, do, do we want to open them or not? Or well, will we leave them? have new people seeing the videos. Yeah, well, I'll show you this one. Yeah. So I mean, this is chlamydia and gonorrhea, the simple two. And then this fella here is the standard six. So this would be the one you would get in a general STI clinic. Okay. So this is kind of the complete one. Chlamydia, gonorrhea, urine, and then blood for HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and syphilis. Okay. So this requires you to do a urine and a blood. So I just want to show you really quickly I did what this that looks like. Did you do this one, did you? you? prick your finger on the Yeah, thing. yeah. And, um, so the first thing to say is, I suppose, it's all very anonymized. That's really important for people to know. So when you register your kit online, you get two codes that are unique to you. You get a numerical code and an alpha code, and they're your codes, and there's, there's no, no other permutation. No one else can have them. So there's no chances of mixing up results? No, like no, it's incredibly yeah. well encrypted. Mm. Then you also get a little a card for your wallet with your code in, so that when you get your email from us, mm. you can log straight in from your phone and, and put your codes in, and then you get your results. Yeah. Um, there's, a, uh, I suppose, how to do it, you know, yeah. in, in, in infogram there. Um, these guys here, you just hold those joints for a sec. Yeah. Um, so that's one tube is your urine. This is your urine bottle, and this is your blood bottle. Um, this is your urine. It's not a lot of blood. No, it's tiny. It's about six to eight little drops from okay. your squeeze of your finger, so it's yeah. tiny. So you build, I felt like I was milking my I, finger. And you are actually milking. Yeah. You know, it's really dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> the word milk. Yeah. <laughs> so you pee in this cardboard pot pour here, that into that. and then you pour it into here and you make sure it doesn't go above a certain line but it'll say all that in the instructions you know yeah then in order to get your blood you have a la- lancets in there which are, there we go so these guys yeah. here not actually sore I was terrified. That, that's I made nice my boyfriend that's do it for did me. You? That's nice like, of you to say because then, some people, I think there's an anticipation. People don't like the idea of it. You know? Oh yeah, I'm, sc- I'm more scared at the thought of it. I'd say it's minus yeah. one in terms of a pain level, you know. So basically what you do is you undo, undo your alcohol swab, mm-hmm. swab either your third or fourth finger. You go for the side because it's a bit fleshier there. Yeah. So if you're a diabetic, for example, that's always where you check your blood sugars from because okay. it's fleshier. It doesn't hurt as much. Yeah. And then you literally press that against your finger. Yeah. Pop it, and then you've got your blood. Blood squeezes out. And then milk it in. And then you milk it into that guy. And okay. then you tip it up a couple of times, and then you're done. And then it goes into a biohazard bag here. Yeah. This guy here. Sealed them up. Just self-explanatory. Seal it up. And then it goes into a slightly dressed envelope, and you just pop in the post back to us. And then you get your results two to three working days later. Okay. Okay, cool. So it's really, really quick. It's email, isn't it? Yeah. So look, there's two ways. What makes the company different and why I got involved, I suppose, is because the follow through is brilliant. Like there have been online testing companies before. Mm -hmm. But what's unique about us is that we provide a huge amount of care. So we've got a team of nurses in Dublin. Yeah. So if you've got a positive result, yeah. you you, you can't access your own results if you've got a positive result. We don't want you to be on your own and to get like HIV results and you're maybe you're out in the piss maybe yeah. you're in a vulnerable place in your head yeah so our nurses or myself contact you yeah with your positive results even yeah. if it's chlamydia yeah even if it's it, well, no matter what it is it doesn't have to be something serious yeah interestingly mm. I did I did the the two one yeah. the first time nothing came back okay I did this one and I got a call from the nurse because she's seen syphilis okay. but I, I, I actually got syphilis and um, a couple of years ago from a boyfriend who cheated on sure. me and brought it back but it always stays like it stays like a it stamp stays on your positive blood. Yeah, yeah it stays positive even though I don't have it it's no still then, there. then you have to go and get another blood test to show that it's not a new infection yeah so I've shown you how to do the blood and to squeeze it in so it takes about um, six drops of blood yeah and then I was showing you that you've got that code and mm. um, so you get an email notification then saying that your results are in and you click the link don't you yeah but it brings you a separate you've got your own separate account okay. so you don't get your results emailed to you you have to log in you know and you've got your own you know your own separate account in order to view your results but if there's any positive results we call you okay so that's really important and then we, we say to you look do you want to go to a public clinic do you want to go to a private clinic what do you want us to do so we'll there's loads of aftercare basically. we'll arrange the follow-up yeah and then we'll yeah. phone you again a couple of weeks later say did you get treated are you okay yeah it's important that kind of stuff you know because people get it really um, because of the stigma around STIs, which drives me crazy, because I look after people every day with STIs. Yeah. Um, you know, people are disproportionately upset. You mm. know, which always really bothers me. You know, they're yeah. really, really, they're really devastated about it. About it you know. Yeah. There really yeah. is no need to be. If people just talked about it a bit more. Exactly. You know? 
And I think the one message from today's video anyway is just get checked. <laughs> yeah, get checked. Yeah, absolutely. And keep talking about it yeah. as mates, I think, you know. Strip the Ask stigma each other. away. If you get checked, tell your friends you went for a test. Or else yeah. everyone is, um, no, do you know what I mean? No one, like, no one knows them. Yeah, you know? I actually used to treat it like a little day out. Like me and my four friends would go to the clinic. We'd go to Bagger Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Bagger Street used always those gangs of lads who yeah. were, were there checking I think out other lads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On grinder in the clinic, like the irony. Um, but I think the, the yeah getting friends together and talking about it yeah. and you know looking at these kits or whatever if you don't want to go into a clinic yeah. and you know maybe and girls are a bit better at it because you know girls start going to their GP much earlier they start going because of periods they start going because of the, the pill mm. you know so girls are much better there's a lot of boys that won't see a doctor until they're like th mid, mid 30s yeah when my dad was doctor he was 50 for the first time yeah Do you know what I mean so yeah. lads Irish lads just don't talk to each other about anything well I just ran into a guy there he's 24 and uh, I was saying I'm coming here to film this and I was like when was the last time you got checked yeah. Never no, been never. checked. Never. And, and you, assumed, you assumed he'd done it. I'm yeah. so surprised how many people haven't got checked. I'm, I'm like, stunned. when was the last time you got checked? No, never, never no, been checked. No, an MSM or a straight guy? A straight guy. Yeah, it's gas, isn't it? Yeah. But what a lot of straight guys will say to me in the clinic all the time is they always say, oh, your woman's a real slapper. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> you, you've also had sex. Yeah, you're the slapper too. I know, it's terrible. It's terrible. That's all that stuff. It yeah. drives me crazy. Yeah. You know? Well, anyway, thanks for chatting to me. That Not was really all. interesting. Not at all. It was a pleasure. Thanks yeah. for coming. Thanks, yeah. Will. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. That's uh, Sexual Health Chats with me and Dr. Dom. If you want to get yourself one of these kits and get checking yourself, uh, if you use the code JAMES20 at the checkout, you'll get 20% off your first kit. So there's no excuse. Go get checked. Let's get checked.